I think we're going. Here we are. All right. So, thank you so much for being here, my man. Dude, thank you for having me. This is cool. Yeah. This is, I'm going to kind of lay it out who, really, I don't even know who you are, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to lay out no, you, how we came apart about to do this podcast. You, you literally met me in an alleyway and invited me on your podcast. It was daytime. Yes. Not late at night. No. I wasn't looking for anything. Th- you know, I, I... You know, the way you make I, that I, I sound. You know. Like I'm looking for uh, love in all the wrong places. Uh, Man, sometimes you just say things and then you realize how, how wrong it came out. Um, <laughs> it, it's so <laughs> stupid. Like, I had a... I don't know. I had I had some moments. I have two kids, two little girls, and like... There are certain ways you can say something like, I'm going to go get these little girls or something, you know, right. like, and, and it, it's so like, it is when it comes out and it sounds so bad. And, uh, you know, you might squeak one or two of those out at work and be like, oh, shit, they, how did they, how well did they know me? Oh, hey, cussing on here or no? You say whatever the fuck you want. Okay, man. cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I already, I already said shit. So yeah, man, this is the internet, know. man. This is the wild, wild west. I know. Yeah. Why, why would you edit it unless uh, you're for kids? You know what I mean? It depends on what your audience is, you know, or who, yeah. you know, if you're trying to. I can see some people wanting to censor themselves in case they're wanting to be more commercial or. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, know it, is is your job gonna, you know, listen to this and will they have a problem with the language you use? Um, mine won't which is cool yeah yeah mine uh yeah mine doesn't that'd be weird though like, <clears throat> oh i don't know what kind of job you would have that would worry about i guess there'd be a few jobs out there that would be like hey can you tone it down on the podcast for us <laughs> we, that doesn't really represent us very well even though we're not paying you when you're on yeah. your own time yeah you know i would say i've become overly cautious about what i put online so you know, we know each other via Instagram, so we're obviously really good friends. The and best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh man, I would I could put a lot more stuff on Instagram, uh, if I just didn't have the question mark in my head it being like commercial work or whatever, uh, is this gonna bite me in the ass? You know? And so I just default to not putting out uh anything I do for anyone else until it's for sure seen like the light of day. Uh, which I, th- that's how you're pro- probably supposed to do it. Um, but so, uh, you know that I do art, I guess we should set this up, right? I'm an artist. Yeah. yeah we'll keep going with the story on how we came well, about this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I met you in an alley. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I was painting, um, graffiti in the daytime, which is dope with my, my homie mythic, uh, from, from Denver piece, bar- barbaric merits, uh, shout out to mythic. Yeah, that that dude's a producer too. Oh, cool! Like DJ, and uh, <laughs> yeah, he's dope, man. Um, yeah, we're painting. Uh, we're he came into town, and we had been trying to like set up doing some kind of mural or whatever, and had something lined up in the bottoms, but we were just like juggling so many things, and work was busy and and stuff. So he was like, "Hey, man, I heard about this art thing called Art Alley. Uh, how about if we just go check that out?" So we rolled down there, and uh, you know. No, I guess no one cares if you go down there and paint. Uh, any aspiring painters, ch- check out Art Alley. Find yourself a little, you know, square foot to doodle on or something, because um, it's all good. Just so uh, when you say painter, for uh, some people might not be hip to that. We're talking like most people would say graffiti. Yeah. Okay. How is that? Is that how, well? What I do you think of that word? I use spray paint. Graffiti is uh, it's it's a dope word. I mean, um, I mean, would you call um, what you were doing graffiti? No. Okay. No, because one, it's legal, and two, uh, so the piece I painted that day was like an eyeball, and and Mythic did uh, Mythic letters, and um, you know, so what he does is more like graffiti because he does letters. I kind of just stay away from that. So there's there's a a sincere demarcation between you know if you're a graph writer or you're a street artist, and it's like one of those things that like I. I play around with like letters, but I would never call myself a graffiti artist because, um, you know, not to say I've never bombed, but it's been a long time. And, and my exploration with graffiti was pretty short because I, 
I just didn't see the reward, like the reward cost ratio, it's like a bug. You know, it's like, uh, um, I mean, obviously it's it's a whole culture, but there's uh, there's graph beef, there's uh, and <laughs> graph riders get get gully, dude. Like they're you you're know, talking just dudes that are out there tagging whatever they see. Exactly. Like, yeah, and and, and they're bubble letters is that kind of ma- the main thing well, that's, or, or that's one thing um so like if if you see like a throw up or something like super quick uh burner those are those are terms um yeah so that's the in the night or during the day but you know just sneak in throw up the letters as fast as you can get out of there just like um, almost like your uh cursive writing just like a quick whatever your signature is like uh man it, there's so many <laughs> like real quick yeah, and see, that's not that's not me. I just right. But what is that? That's graffiti. Like, what do uh-huh. you? Yeah, is that respected? Oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I knew one of those. I knew a dude. His name was Stoic. He was uh, in yeah. Kansas City. Uh huh. And he, that's that's all he did. He took either the fat markers. He mm-hmm. liked those a lot, and then the cans and just Stoic on stop signs inside. Oh yeah. I I didn't see. I see the coolness in getting away with doing it, and like I'm gonna mark this up, and yeah. like I like the. I'm in a bit of an adrenaline junkie. I can see how that'd oh, be that really would be a, for you. Yeah. I, I, I've been close to the line before just doing it all by myself. Just <laughs> I've, there's been times where I'm like, it sounds fun. Why don't I just go do it? Uh, uh-huh. but I don't see, I, I don't see exactly why that would be respected because I, I don't know. I, I see why it would be you know, fun, but not respected. Here's the thing. There's kind of a code. And so when I talk about just not dabbling in it, sort of out of respect, it's, it's partly cause they're, there's a code man um and it's not written down anywhere but you know um like uh, one of the things that attracted me to hip-hop which uh, so all right so listener now knows that i paint um and i'm into hip-hop right okay so i also rap i tried graffiti i I do the street art sort of side of that and um tried break dancing for some years and just did not get good enough at it and uh another one of those things like with graffiti it's like you got respect for it you know you try it you you garner a greater appreciation for it and then if you're if you're not killing it you know you just step back and let the professionals do their thing so that that's my thing with graffiti i guess is like that it's just not you know it's not my thing but it's it's highly respected though not all graffiti artists are respected if that makes sense there's some really shitty ones out there um, what what's the difference between a shitty one and and like a real prolific one? Uh, I th- I feel like it's evident in just looking at it. Like you you know you see a tag and it's got a sense of rhythm to it, um, a flow, okay, a style, right? Or, okay. Or you look at a piece that has no real style to it. It's just like vandalism, right? So there's that there's that line too okay. because uh, graffiti art is vandalism unless it's a legal wall and then Mm -hmm. you know that's sort of the um within graffiti world uh like argument of if it's a a legal wall is that respectable you know Mm -hmm. um i think it's just like you can't you don't want to claim you're anything that you're not so that's um that that to me has always been really important uh within that world is just to be really respectful of everything that I'm not and to uh like really take seriously the things that I am. Right? Okay. Um anyway, so yeah, we we met and and I was painting and it was pretty hot. Uh I think we worked on that piece for 3 hours that day and who knows if it's even there anymore, right? Cuz that's art alley, so you can just get up or uh get taken down or whatever. Um but I have some murals around there. Okay, so Art Alley is a 18th, between 18th and 17th, um, and between Locust and, I think, Cherry. Yeah, that sounds uh, about right. Right, and then, so, my homie Psych and I did a mural, and maybe we can link, uh, like, I had it, did a video to, for this mural, or of us painting this mural, um, on 17th and Locust. And you got a YouTube channel? Uh, I, I do have some videos on YouTube, um... Uh, so what, what was it? Uh, it's lucid arts. See, here's the thing. So it's you know I I'd know, love to I know yeah, my I could put that up on and people could go check that out. Well, let, let me make sure that you have that stuff before um before yeah. this goes live because I do have a YouTube page and 
I have a video of an art show. I have a video of um, painting that mural, painting a food yeah, truck. Yeah. This won't go up for her <coughs> till next Monday. All right. About a week. All right. So all you listening, having a case of the Mondays. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to us. That's right. I, I lay this. Feel, I try to lay better. these out on Mondays. That's great, man. Yeah. You know, uh, perfect time to kind of start off the week. Um, yo, know, what were we talking about? Graffiti art videos. Yeah, all your videos on. Your, I was talking about your yeah. YouTube. You were throwing. You you were talking about how you were throwing stuff up. Yeah, and and, and um, it took three hours and the murals and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So then there's the mural at uh, 18th and. 17th and Locust. It's like 150 feet wide or something. It's like a yeah. Giant, you're talking about the murals. And maybe we could put some up. Yeah, that fa- I I was showing a couple people at work the face one because that one, and I was saying that that one's so good I, in my mind that it's been respected so much because that's been up there for a couple years and no one's touched it, right? Uh, yeah, a few years. Yeah, um, and kind of that's that's the luck that I've had thus far is that because I don't work very much. I mentioned I got uh, little kids and so. You know they're they're the priority, so um, I just kind of get out when I can. When I painted the piece that we're talking about in particular, which we call the racket mural, because racket is written in red across the middle of it, next to a old like 1930s Model T ish kind of car. It's gorgeous. That is such a gorgeous piece. Did you use uh, rollers? I use both okay. spray paint and I've and roller. Okay. So. Uh, because it's so big it's like i thought so i knew it i was just there last week and looking at it with a friend i was like i bet you they he used rollers on that yeah well so we we just figured out kind of what is the square footage of each like we designed it right and we designed it digitally over a photograph template and i I wanted to break it down to okay as few colors as possible you know um i think there's okay black blue uh yellow yellow multiple shades of red right. and maybe that's it something like that so pretty pretty minimal and then figured out okay all the details is going to happen with the red so that's spray paint um the yellow and blue are going to be pretty large uh planes of just flat color you know so the blue is the shadows the the yellow is the highlights the highlight is that how you say it highlighted highlight side of the face highlighted you know? Um, highlighted, highlighted. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then, you know, black, black line work. So it has kind of that, that cartoony feel and, uh, it's, you know, it's a favorite of kids getting their senior pictures taken. Um, see it on Instagram <laughs> all the time or why, what is racket? What does that mean? Or wh- why, the, what's the word racket mean? Uh, well, so racket's like a hustle, right? Right. Okay. So yeah. So it is our hustle and that was, uh, my homie Sykes contribution. So, um, you know, when you collaborate, uh, a lot of times the best way to do it is be like, you know, this is what I'm working on. They're like, this is what I'm working on. Uh, maybe that goes together, you know, and then you, you kind of put it together. And so psych, you see his murals all over. You and him Kansas worked on City. this together. Yeah. He, okay. he did like the, the background elements. I mean, we, okay. We both just worked in tandem yeah. on the entire planning. And well, I didn't know if that was like stuff. a solo type thing or if that was something you, you, no, nah, I mean, you know, <laughs> we and we had people come out and help us and that was so instrumental. So, uh back to the kids thing, my uh, so that was when I just had um Melody, who's my older daughter, and and uh my yeah, my wife took her to Florida to go see a friend. I was like, "Oh man, snap. I got a week." Uh <laughs> You know, let's not relax. Let's just paint a really big ass mural. And uh, so I was working like 40 hours, 40 plus hours, you know, in the the week that would otherwise be like my staycation and just splashing up there as much paint as I can, as quick as I can. Um, And and that was fun. And then uh, let's see, I feel like I should set up more about myself. People like, man, who is this guy talking? I know, but I've just... I almost, I, I, I've said this a couple times during the podcast. Like, it, this podcast is for my selfish reasons because I do it because I'm enjoying. Yeah. Here, because but yeah, we should set it up more. I'm just fascinated because I have so many questions, and like about the whole graffiti thing. And then I didn't realize how much of a hip hop 
I didn't know you did, really did your own music like that. Like, I didn't know how, how serious it was. Well, whatever you want about who you are and everything, man. Let's do it. Cause you're sure. Oh, okay. Here we go. So I'm a, I'm a local artist. Uh, my name is Daniel Bartle, but I go by, uh, I basically go by Lucid, but then, you know, as like a nom de guerre, but then um, Lucid's kind of I love generic. It. No, I, mean, I love well, it. Well, no, no. It, it, so it's, it, you'll find a lucid in like philly or something you'll oh find I, lucid, I, I can see you know that, yeah. so so i was like all right so my uh my art uh what was at one time a business but is like basically all my visual art endeavors is lucid arts and then all my musical endeavors is lucid flows there it is. and then uh they're kind of converging now so it's like these two rivers in my life that are i'm i've been trying to channel together and they're finally uh, coming together and the impetus being having kids and being like, man, there's just not enough time in my life to have oh, diverging man. interests. Right. Anything that I that I really want to perpetuate and carry on, um, don't want to let it fall to the wayside. I need to tie it all up together, you know, so it, it can all self perpetuate. And also so it's kind of a OCD thing that has spread me. Um, to just be more interested in trying a lot of different things than establishing uh, a quantifiable, this is what I do, you know. Um, I, I've always kind of, like when I start getting into like a series of something or uh, doing a, a thing that would possibly be construed as, oh, that's Lucid's thing, you know, um, then I like veer the other way. Yeah, uh, wow. And I, I think that that's, that's because you know i've seen a destination down the road and i didn't want to i don't want to get like caught up in having to put more energy into something that i'm not like really really into you know um so i've, I've tried Ta time becomes so valuable especially when you have kids yeah. it's just yeah. so precious and what's crazy i'm in cr so much more productive um with my time so constrained but you know that doesn't yeah. It doesn't happen out the gate as you yeah. know, like when you have kids, it, it takes a while to figure out, uh, for, you know, first off to figure out the routine. What, what is that? You know, what is my, who am I now? And what are my responsibilities? You know, what am I, do you ever feel like mul you feel, do you ever feel like you're multiple people? I most definitely am multiple people. Right. And I, you know, I think that I sort of always have been. Yeah. Because. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've always had um, since I was little. So I, when I was in kindergarten, I told my mom I wanted to be a painter. And oh, cool, um, man. I just had that like clarity of desire wow. or obsession or whatever. Um, but I was not like a gifted young, young child. I just really, really wanted to do this one thing. That so, seems pretty gifted to me. Well, that's a gift. That's a gift to me. Yeah. Yeah, and and then uh, everything else afterwards, I would regard as more like skill development, right? Okay. But fueled by the desire that this is what I do, this is who I am, um, and of course, as like a kid, you just <laughs> get distracted a lot. Um, but ultimately, uh, when I so I grew up in the Denver area, um, Arvada. So someone from Denver, be like, you're not from Denver. Um, and uh, I came here for uh, college at the Art Institute in 98. Oh, wow. And uh, did my BFA in painting and then, like, waited tables and just, you know, tried to figure it out after that, right? And um, uh, my, my, my homie Christian, shout out Amen, he uh, got me, like, a sculpting job. So in school, I, you know, I learned um, form drawing uh, and also like traditional sculpting right so it was a, a, like a fabrication studio and, and we did like roman greco yeah, statues dude. and like and like uh mole <laughs> uh like plaster work and stuff right right um and then uh i i got an in with architectural illustration uh there's a r incredibly talented artist who i don't think he does it anymore i think i think he switched to hallmark but um he pretty much wanted someone to just come on, learn how he does what he does professionally, and then uh, help to fill his workflow so he could take more work 
on and just have me kind of like uh, like fill in. So he taught me how to, uh, you know, do architectural like line work drawings, um, Gee, integrate man. people and trees and uh, our. And this is your dream, was, and you just you. I mean, like this is th- what th- you've th- always wanted. Like, they're all like since s- you're in kindergarten. If my dream is a tree, these are all like higher branches, yeah. but still. But I mean, as that age, I mean, I just, I, I don't mean that was your dream that you hit the pinnacle, but like since kindergarten, I want to be an artist. And then as soon as you go to college, you're, you're, you're still in that world and yeah. doing what you love to do. You're not yeah. stuck in chemistry and English and history. I mean, maybe you're doing some of that, but you're this. Man, yeah. No, dude, I, mean, I feel. I'm sitting here just no, jealous. I, feel I mean, it's just blessed. unbelievable, man. No, I feel that's I feel dope. Truly, truly blessed. Look at you. In, I love it. Life. I love seeing that. Um, shit. That's awesome, dude. See, and I, I, I love that. I love your, yeah. your attitude. Your, um, it's awesome, dude. Your, like your response to, to someone doing well. You know, like everybody, th- everybody wants to do well, and when you can see somebody yeah. beating the system, doing well, living it, it's just inspiring. It's awesome to see. Like I got goosebumps. Like I got hair <laughs> sticking. Like it's awesome, dude. I love it. I'm so happy for uh, you. Dude. I don't even know you, and I'm just like stoked for you. It's fucking rad, dude. Uh, Good for you. Thank Keep you. going. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. No, that's that's fine, man. Um, I get yeah. hype. I'm sorry. Well, and so the next time I'm on the show, like I, I think I'll have a more quantifiable thing to share. So it'll be it'll be easier to tee up and say, oh yeah, this is Lucy. He's coming on, and he has this this album thing because there's of course an album at the center of this like sort of life evolutionary step that feel like I'm on the the cusp of taking. And uh, it's it's wrapped around this convergence that you know that uh, that we were talking about. So um, I've only listened to a, a couple of your shows, but but a theme that I've heard is um, you know like unintentional life, life path, like uh, you know direction. Um, I feel like you probably believe that like uh, instinct is a very important voice to follow. Yeah, I just never follow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I do. I, I've been better, but there's a few times where the instinct has been completely wrong. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for I get, I get, us, sometimes man. I just get I get too trustworthy, and my instinct is just sometimes to trust somebody when you, you know yeah. what? No, you're sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. Well, because there's your what you would desire to see. So, like, yeah. in, in a case of another individual, you have a desire to see a certain type of individual and I think it's just natural that our minds project that you know you see a few um affirming signs of attributes that you want to see in somebody yeah. you know that align with an, another picture that you have a narrative in your head. that you already have sure and then you know you, your brain just projects that yeah. on that person and so you presume yeah. that that person is the person inside your head yeah yeah and then invariably that uh, illusion shatters <laughs> and that sucks. Yeah. 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 Man, I, I mean, I feel like we're all dealing with so similar of stuff and, and, um, like you, me, and, and everybody. Like, I feel like everyone I know, and it's, it's varying degrees, uh, you know, and, and some people have it shittier at one time or better at another or whatever, but it's, it's all just like, it's all the same thing, you know what I mean? Um, like we're all on a journey that I think if you zoomed out, it would just look like a natural pattern, you know. And mm-hmm. and so if if you were watching um, a river in everyone's sort of life evolution, you'd see some people, you know, getting pushed out towards the banks, and there's like some people in the middle, and then eventually the the water droplets or people, you know, like rubbing along the banks or like tumbling through the weeds eventually come back out into the middle and um, right. I, don't, I don't even know if the middle's where you want to be but um you know trying to because it's so easy trying to visualize an analogy that kind of get, gets that idea across um yeah man life life pretty pretty badass even tragic and badass at the yeah, same dude. time yeah man yeah Absolutely, it is. Well, before you go on, you you said if you come on the podcast again, I'll tell you we we've been doing this for I've I've known you for forty minutes, something like that. I'm telling you now, anytime you want, man, 
I can tell already. Mate, anytime you want, you come on. We'll rap. I, I know we got all kind of like I'd cool. Be, yeah. So yeah, yeah, and 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 I rap. So you know, like oh shit, that's right. I forgot. Right. <laughs> so so uh, yeah. I wish I could I can... rap. I wish I, I I love hip hop. Like I dick around when I'm all by myself in these mics. Yeah, and yeah. The intro I just did for the last podcast that I just uploaded last night. I did a a biggie intro. I didn't rap. I just did the. This one goes out to all the teachers that said I wouldn't amount to nothing or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just giving around, but yeah. Dude, I love hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. There is a real gratifying feeling, like rapping all, along with the verse that you know oh, that oh. that you're feeling. You know what I mean? Oh, I like can. To, to I got. I got an album. I got an album. I'll, I'll rap the whole thing from start to finish when I'm by myself. Dude, that's, that's fun. That's a great feeling. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's a lot why. Um, I think people want to rap, right? Right. Um, f for me, I was, I've been long able to sort of use the same visual mind that I use for the visual arts and use that like with words and, and rhyming words and stuff. Um, and I think like starting out, you know, self, self-critical uh, as I may be, you know, I'd say like it took me a long time to figure out delivery, but writing like how to write interesting rhymes, compelling rhymes, rhymes that people don't like wouldn't, you know, have have thought of um, like spinal limbs of scarecrows, uh, violin concerto, you know, um, spiral wind of airflow, you know, like <laughs> j just like for my mind to be able to. Um, All of those connect too, if you think about it. Yeah. you c So you can create a visual. Right. Right. Um, so I'm another way in which I'm incredibly fortunate, uh, just kind of like stemming off of doing the architectural illustration. So the architecture market, you know, crashed in like 2009 or whatever. I didn't and even really ask what your professional job was. I didn't know if you wanted to put it out there. I don't. Yeah. Well, I won't, I won't say, um, I won't say too much, but that I, I work in matter. marketing. Okay. Um, that's that gray area as <laughs> the thing i that's honestly the thing i care least about i don't i really don't care what you do from nine to five i'm more interested yeah, like i said i bumped into you doing graffiti i thought you were just a graffiti dude i was thinking dude i want to talk about this dude about going to train yards or wherever doing that stuff and mm -hmm. running from people i want to talk to him about doing shit at like 3 a.m in the middle yeah. of the hood and seeing shit if that kind of stuff i, I had no idea what to expect but sure, that's yeah. what I, uh uh, what do you just uh stereotypical type in in my mind? Yeah. I was just thinking that that was because, like I said, I just met you. I I uh, you gave you kind of your version. I'm gonna uh, tell I you my version of how I I bumped into you. All right, yeah. I was with a friend. I mean, I'll do real quick. Yeah. We went to uh get some coffee at Messenger Cafe. All right. And then we we're like, hey, what should we do? It's still really nice outside. And uh and she was like, oh, let's go check out the uh, graffiti down here. I was like, oh, let's go check some art art out. You mm -hmm. need to get going soon. Oh no no no! Okay. no I, I I just wanted to see where you're at. I got I got oodles of time, man. Okay. Yeah. Whenever you, if you need to get out of here, I know you got stuff to do. Just let me know. No, I'll, I'll uh. Time's precious, like we said. I don't want to take is. it all. It is. Yeah, you know, I got at least like I got probably like forty minutes. Or oh, something. beautiful. You know, yeah, I got time to chill. Yeah, and so we started walking, just looking at, just walking around, checking all the beautiful art. We actually stopped at the racket one and was just admiring that one. It's just such a cool, nice piece. It's fun. It's big and it's. Yeah. clean it's clean yeah and it's it's just dope uh yeah. and then so we go down an alley and we're like smart do you smell paint i was like yeah i think so someone they must have been here last night or something mm -hmm. and we walk walk and boom you and your boy mythic are there you got your trunk open the music's blasting you've oh, yeah. got i couldn't tell you how many cans of spray paint you had there i was like it was impressive like an art the arsenal of spray paint and that was just leftovers man yeah yeah um that's that's how you gotta roll though. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have the paint. Yeah, yeah for bet. sure. And yeah, so I, I so I, I we saw you and so we just started conversation up with you. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm always thinking about the podcast. This is my passion project. Like this is what I love. This yeah, thing. no, I, like, I can tell. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this would be a perfect guest. I was like, I'm just gonna throw it out there. The, that's my. That's how I go about life these days is just asking for shit. The mm -hmm. worst anybody can say to me is no. Okay. I don't get my he hurt, my feelings hurt. Yeah. I asked you. Here we are. Yeah. Boom. I just thought you were just 
cool artist, dude. Well, and, and then we got rap. He, we got dude. Yeah, and and here's the thing. Like what what I need is people to uh, take an interest in me and say, hey, why don't you come on this platform and like just hopefully say something interesting enough to compel someone to go and check out, um, you know, my Instagram page, which is at Lucid Flows. Or my website, which is lucidarts.net, which I haven't updated in a long time. Um, or my music website, lucidflows.com. Um, lucidflows.com. Lucidflows.com. Yeah. Can uh, we buy stuff there or is it f- or you got on? Like, no, dude, I, I need. Do you have music? I, up? Where can we find your music or can we? I, I have some stuff on SoundCloud and I have some stuff on okay. Bandcamp. And I have guest spots on other people's albums that are also on, uh, you know, Bandcamp or Spotify or whatever. And when I re-release um my album it's going to be two albums it's going to be like an old album and a brand new album and i've got a single in there uh music video that developed for that and got a bunch of music videos that i'm trying to oh music videos nice yeah yeah so so part of this like fun i'm on hiatus uh being a parent is is like taking a step back and thinking you know i do all this stuff and i want to like i'm gonna I, I'm not going to be in a place where I can be trying to get shows. I'm not going to be in a place where I, I can really be taking on um, freelance stuff. Uh, and like the times that I have, um, it's it's been tricky. I, I painted a mural. What? and It's so, been tricky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the kids and when stuff. When you it's rock like around the clock, it's everything tricky? Everything just takes longer than I could possibly imagine that it would because in, invariably whenever I take on a project – uh, or like two projects, then one stalls and then converges with the other. And then one or two of my kids get sick and then work is like ramped up. And somehow like my life just became hell. Right. Uh, right. And you know, so you muscle through and you're like, uh, oh, this, this project, you're going to get it a week late. <laughs> and yeah. hopefully people are cool with that. Um, how long have you been rapping since 97 or 98 or something? Wow. So a while. Yeah. 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 Um, how old are you? About forty, roughly. Uh, almost. I was gonna say Dude, I didn't think quite. I think you're about close. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine, something like that. Thirty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm about. I'm about there. I'll be there in a month. Yeah. I thought we were about the same age. Yeah. So 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 you've already gone through the oh shit I'm not immortal anymore phase. No. And figured out. No. No. <laughs> oh. No, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? Do you know that no, uh, slightly, slightly, I used to ride a motorcycle. I won't go there anymore as you, bad as never, I want like, to. you like thrown your back out or something or like. Oh, no, I, I that we can say that for another time. I'm not going right. to go around my neck. I've got my back. My back is legit jacked. I, I don't want to go down there, but yeah, you're right. But yeah, but I still, you're right. I'm not the 18, 19 year old that was huffing duster doing rails of cocaine off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. party, I'm going 110. The first time I ever rode a mo- motorcycle, I rode it in a parking lot for about 15 minutes, took it on the highway wearing shorts and a wife beater and <laughs> sunglasses. What did I want to do? Get it to 100 miles an hour just because I wanted to say that I could. Almost killed myself as soon as I got on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not to that you, point you anymore. You are an adrenaline junkie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not to that point. I'm, I'm not that nuts Hen- anymore, but I still am like. That's why you want. You want to live vicariously through someone who got chased through train yards and. and <laughs> I was hoping you were after we shut the mics off, you would be like, hey, you want to come no, with I'd, me and go do that? Here's, shit? here's the thing. Like I, I tried it, you know. So, yeah, you go to the bottoms and uh, you can only paint so long before there's there's a flashlight coming at you or whatever. And you got to. I'm in good shape. Plan your routes. I'm in decent shape. Yeah. Well, back then, you know, I could I could hop a fence like nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, uh, you know, before parkour was oh, existed yeah. in our in our consciousness, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to like compare myself to, to that. But you know, it's no, like that is you, what it would be. You're a kid, though. You're a kid, and you're you're just like, yeah, you can, yeah, you can climb a fence like nothing, yeah, you know, because um, that's just, you know, if you're a high schooler and you're in the mall. Like you don't take the ramp, you jump. You know, you jump yeah. over the railing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, I am, uh, I'm definitely delusional. I definitely, my mind still tells me that I'm almost invincible, mm-hmm. and that my body will. I'll wake up sometime, like, and, and go to the bathroom, and my yeah. back will go out, and I'm literally stuck on the floor. Literally, like, I yeah. cannot. My, 
just back goes out. I've got mm-hmm. two bulging discs. It just I can't literally cannot move. So yeah, that that checks me, but my mind still says, "Ah, push that shit to the back. You'll be good mm-hmm. here in a couple of days. You're still you, you're still 20." <laughs> yeah. I'm delusional, man. I got a broken brain. Sure. I told somebody that I'm broken in my brain. Uh, I mean, in not, a good not way. In a totally bad way. Yeah. No, in a good yeah. way. I'm not totally you know what I mean? I'm I'm conscious I, enough to dude, know that. Dude, I think I'm, you have to be slightly broken in the brain uh, to, I don't, you know, I, I think that uh, every, everyone is. It's just like, if you can say that, then you know it. Yeah, you got to you know admit what I mean? it. And, uh, yeah, you have to admit it. You you have to, we, I like we have to admit a lot of things just like collectively. Um, and, and so a lot of kind of where I see my life headed is, depicting depicting that like reckoning or whatever that we all have to have uh with ourselves for like <laughs> to stay alive as a species you know what i mean yeah um well, and, uh, well that's i mean yeah yeah our species yeah that could I guess be. i don't even know like you you might not you might be like i don't even believe in climate change you know i'm not a climate change denier I'm not a hardcore right Republican. I listen to everything. A lot of smart people, a lot of smart people say it exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't mind in January when it's like 40 degrees. I got a V8 out it, there. Dude, it's, so not, I, it's not entirely unpleasant. I mean, we've had <laughs> we've had some pretty mild winters lately. I'll tell you this. Uh, and yeah, and that's, on. you know, I mean... 50 or 60 degrees in in like December isn't unpleasant. Right. It's just disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually like the cold. I was mm-hmm. born and raised in Michigan. Cold don't phase me. The heat Good. the yeah. heat messes with me. But human beings as a species, we do yeah. much better in the heat than we do the cold. So if there's we'd rather have global warming than global freezing. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's good. We should do it. I think things should be. I don't know. I'm not political. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know how we also got global warming, but I don't know enough about uh, it. You know, because because uh, that's a lot uh, where conversation goes there because that's that's where I'm headed. Like okay, with yeah. um, with a lot of my art, not specifically just like climate change and global warming. I I think that it's breaking down the the misperception that there is a concrete division between individuals and between us as a species and the natural environment in which we exist you know what i mean like, uh can i can i interrupt yeah of course um i guess the biggest reason why i don't pay too much attention to the global warming thing mm-hmm. is i I, I think something else is going to get us before that does. I don't think that has a big enough long-term effect to devastate humanity or our species, if if that's anything that somebody would be worried about or if it's the animal, whatever the worry yeah. is. I think there's going to be something that's going to be more catastrophic and and, and big, something we have to worry about more than, than global warming. I think like meteor, uh, meteor like impact is extremely... Meteor impact? It, or, it, or that's going to happen. Or, or nuclear war. Or uh, nuclear war, I'm not... That's not going to wipe everybody out. People will survive that. Yeah, I don't... I'm I, thinking like... Uh, I, I don't see that happening either, personally. I don't... That's not a big issue. I'm thinking... Yeah. The other thing is... I, I'm thinking more like uh, the caldera, the uh, Yellowstone. That's a giant. Okay. That's a giant volcano. Yes, that can go up anytime between now and two hundred thousand years from now. Anytime. Yeah. It, it, it is actually the timeline of it that it's the schedule that it's been on. Yeah, we're in that part now where it's just beginning, so that could yeah. go up. I mean, that could uh, that could it, we don't know. Maybe be in a thousand years or two thousand. Yeah, years. well, I mean, so but that's probably going to be what you're touching on. I feel is is totally instrumental to. To, to this idea is you know I, I feel like we take a lot of credit for our own ability to um, thrive as a species and I think that if you look at uh, the geographic like the planetary condition that we've been in is such a monumentally like mild environment 
inside of this bubble, you know, inside of the chaos of space. There's Goldilocks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we can't take credit for that. Right. So we took. No, a, I don't think took, anybody is. We took advantage. I, I think people do like subconsciously because um, I think. Take credit for. I think, yeah, I think subconsciously, I mean, who's to say? Well, and and in subtle ways, you know, it's like um, I think that people who feel like, you know, we have dominion over the earth. Therefore, the earth is here for us okay. are completely overlooking. Uh, like that's the mindset I see in them is that. You know. Uh, yeah, now I do know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, sense? yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, I'm I'm fucking complicit. Uh, you know, I work I work in. I mean, you have to be right. Man, you know, I I know kind people of. who have gone like off the grid, and the best I've seen uh, are friends that I have who have who've gone off the grid, but still have like an off the uh, grid. How? Well maybe not completely off the grid in so far as being solely self-sufficient with their garden. Oh, off the grid. Off the, okay. I yeah. didn't know if you meant like off the rails, like, uh, uh okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah. yeah the, so, the sky is falling. So, the earth is flat. I have had a flat earther on. He's a good buddy of mine, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you meant that or off the grid. Okay. Being self-sufficient off, yeah, yeah, off yeah. the grid, grid. Mm-hmm. Okay, my bad. Yeah, like like reduce your carbon. Your yeah, carbon okay, fr- that's that's to, beautiful. That's beautiful. Know, I like that. I'd, I'd love to do something like that. I'm all about that shit. <laughs> Man, I I, I want to go to Alaska and just live off the land. That's what I want to do. I'm an yeah. avid bow hunter. Like anything out outdoors, I love hunting. I love fishing. I love gardening. All that stuff. I would love to do it on a grander scale. Yeah, uh, dude. I mean, everyone. I feel like. Uh, almost anyone that I probably connect with in any way uh, probably really likes nature. Nice. And you're from Colorado. That's in your blood. You have to be. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's hard to live there. I mean, I guess there are people that live there and they don't take advantage of. Sure. You know, oh, the, yeah. Yeah. You got the it. environment. But right. Um, boy, I mean, what what a place if you have any inkling of appreciation for. You know, your nap, natural anywhere habitat. out west, anywhere out west. Yeah, in I mean, my opinion, the, the desert's powerful. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm. you go out to the desert, and um, yeah, so that that's where I know some people have gone to do like a self sufficient existence kind of thing. Um, Much easier out there with all the sun. You can do solar panels and stuff. That would make sense. Yeah, 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 and and they make like mud homes and stuff, or yeah. like uh, you homes, know, people uh, that have done that, huh? I do, I do. Yeah, I uh, wow. really talented respectable oh i'm uh, not people yeah Yeah, i I mean i'm just putting that out there for yeah just to convey my own opinion or whatever um that's walking the walk yeah a lot of people talk it that's walking it yeah you know and you here we are we live in the city bro we're on the fucking grid like it or not you know Uh, i've got a i got a macbook a flat screen Mm -hmm. microphones a downstairs a v8 you got a a MacBook or I, whatever that is. I mean, what <laughs> these dudes are in a mud home. Good for them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you know, if you can, if you live in a mud home with uh, solar power, and then you can use that solar power to to power huh. your music equipment and make an album, and then you know, like circulate it or whatever. That's like what that. they do. Uh, Good. One, one guy I know he. Wow. He he does that. Um. I'll shout out Miles Bonnie because shout out Miles Bonnie. What up, Big G? Yeah, anyone who knows him just like knows he's an amazing musician. But uh, and I remember having a conversation with him at um, my album, re- my first album release party in, in 2010. And my wife and I, we had started a garden. It was like 3,000 square feet in, in oh, our that's backyard a nice garden. And you know, we were we were trying to set it up you know we still compost and stuff but we have a lot of deer in our neighborhood and do you live in missouri yeah parkville like how many how much land are you on acre yeah an acre yeah i can shoot a couple of them deer for you there's a lot dude i can shoot a lot of them yeah um i put it out there if you want with a bow (laughs) with with a bow with a bow 
Oh, actually, that would work. Yeah, because we it's legal. We, we kind of live in a in a bowl. Yeah, we're in un- unincorporated um, Platte County, technically. So I'm throwing it out there. You don't have to give me an answer now, but if you need someone to shoot us some deer out there, I am your man. Uh, I'm gonna keep that in mind. Yeah, for real. Yeah. I'll shoot. I don't care. I'll shoot does. I'll shoot bucks. I'll There's shoot whatever's you, on there. I'll if shoot. You don't drop them. You're tracking them through neighbors' yards and stuff, though, right? I mean, oh, dude, yeah. uh, they're like, gonna be care. super, super close. They're gonna die within. 40, 50 yards at the most. I've never been hunting. You want to go? Um, it's something I feel You don't like have to. You just have to sit there and watch? No, nah, I feel like I need to do it at some point. Like, if Are I'm, you a meat eater? I am. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm omnivore. I mean, I love my veggies, but. Who um, doesn't? Yeah. 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 And uh, my, my wife engineers my diet mostly, so it's pretty healthy. Uh, but, you know, man, meat, it's so good. Like, you know, ideally, I'd be a vegetarian. I think I'd make myself feel better. You uh, ever had elk? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and deer, you've eaten all that stuff. You like it? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. Um, venison. Like, we make a really good venison chili. Dude, you got you you got a, a, a grocery store in your backyard. You've got your garden, <laughs> and you've got your venison. I, I can teach you how to shoot a bow and arrow. You get that. I mean, you can shoot your own. Yeah, yeah. Meat, I mean, I can come out there and shoot a to, couple for you, and I'll sh- I'll give you a whole really bunch have of anywhere meat. to address it. Like, <laughs> like I do it. Blo- bloody deer hanging from my tree. <laughs> you don't have to hang it from a tree. Okay, I can see. I'm ignorant. Yeah, I can butcher it. I can do everything. Keep it in mind. If you want me to come out there, right, I'll I'm blast a, a couple, and I'll cut a bunch of steaks up and some tenderloins. We'll get you a whole bunch of meat. Uh, I will keep it in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, I, I feel like. You know, there's a lot of things we should cover. Maybe, uh, maybe <laughs> whatever you want, man. Yeah, whatever well, no, you want. This I I say this this uh, podcast is purely guest driven. Mm-hmm. It's whatever the guest wants to talk about, man. Whatever you wherever you want to go, man. I'll derail us every now and then. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's uh, what I do. <laughs> you know our our initial discussion was like, hey, let's you know maybe maybe I come on this time and talk about visual arts, and then next yep. time talk about like the music. Yeah, um, absolutely, man. I, I think that's that's perfect. So because you got um, something dropping soon. Yeah, I, yeah. I got a. Yeah, we'll I talk about that later. Stuff, yeah, and we'll talk about the art now, man. I'm fascinated by all of it. Yeah. So, and anyone that you know, I think checks me out online on, um, you know, if you go to my Instagram, handle, please check at, it out at Lucy Flows. You'll see a lot of pictures of my kids. And uh, some dope art, yeah, some a lot dope of stuff that I've done. So ass art is on there. Lucid anything flows. from illustration, a mural to, um, you know, like the architectural illustrations. I got some yeah. of those on there. Um, like uh, some, I, I know I have some that I did for like the Marlin Stadium. Um, so I was I was working in like um, mostly sports architecture oh, when I was cool. doing that. So it was a lot of uh, because these are also. I think the industries that that still have sort of a nostalgic nostalgic feel for you know like doing a yeah. watercolor rendering of a stadium instead of just going with yeah. the much kind of prettier you know more realistic representation of uh like a high end uh digital 3D rendering You could almost right? look at it in like a tattoo perspective as like the new art like the new New school, as they say, they the new school and the old school. Yeah, yeah. There's it's nostalgic for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, so that's a that's a pretty cool niche to find yourself in. So I worked on a lot of major league, uh, minor league, collegiate, uh, sports stadiums and Michigan? facilities and stuff. Um, I don't think so. I worked yeah. on a lot of stuff. I mean, being that's my being school, an yeah. illustrator. Yeah. Uh, I just got bounced from project to project. Right, so, okay. um, I, like I was with the company I worked for, for three years and I, I freelanced. Uh, so I, I eventually got hired on by an actual architecture company or whatever. So, um, and I worked uh, for them for like three years and you want another beer or do you want to split a beer? Uh, or are you good? I'll take another one. All yeah. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I'll, right. I'll top off the one that I have. Good stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wish every time the word um came to my mouth, I just didn't say anything. You and me both. I consciously try and catch that because 
there's something much more compelling about a pause than there is about um <laughs> <laughs> you know when you do a a podcast and you're the host mm-hmm. and you start listening like I don't really listen to my podcasts anymore mm-hmm. I'll listen to a little bit just kind of as far as like the pr- production type stuff like adding the yeah, song yeah make sure it sounds good not, not yeah yeah it. um but like for the first few episodes I wanted to s- just listen to myself to see what what I sound like and you know, you find out really quickly you don't like your voice. I find out really quickly I don't like my voice. I'm like, God. Oh, but, and then you find out, because I'm so self-critical. Yeah. I'm, my big thing was like, so, so this. Oh, so, so. I was like, I kept hearing my, yeah. like, I would listen to it. I feel like, man, I say the word so, so much. Like, I don't know about yeah. if I say um that much, but I'm like, so, tell me about the graffiti. Oh, so you're a hip hop artist. Oh, so, and yeah. I was like, oh, I got to work on that. So it's kind of cool to work on like things you don't I remember, like about yourself. I remember a girl in college at uh, when I was at Colorado State who like used the word <laughs> plethora. <coughs> like a plethora of times in a plethora of. Oh, she just learned the big word and she was wanting to use it as much yeah, as it was, she could. Like it was it was mockable for sure because. <laughs> It was like every other sentence-ish or something. Right. It would definitely be any time that she spoke, she would. It was probably just like one time each exchange, she would sneak it in or something. You know, yeah, and that's that. You get known. Yeah. When you you're, use a certain, it's almost like a catchphrase. Mm-hmm. You just get known for something. Like mine used to be when I was like a, a young man, like if we're talking 19, 20, nice. But it would be like, nice, nice. like, And then I was just known as the nice guy. And whenever someone, somebody would always mock me, nice. <laughs> like, like that was mine for a while. Yeah, so it's like if you have a, <laughs> if you have a particular laugh or something and, and, you know, you laugh and then your friend's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, like yeah. a real goofy type. Yeah, yeah, a distinguishable just distinct, laugh. I yeah. think, yeah. You know? Yeah, just, just anything someone can latch on to uh, to clown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I like the Chinese uh, proverb is that the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. It's the same type of thing. If something sticks out like that laugh, everyone's going to jump on it, you know? Yeah. 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 Which, I mean, that's, I feel like, fairly analogous to also being an artist, right? Like yeah. your whole life, you're just uh, different. See, seeing things different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and on, on purpose, right? Yeah. Um, trying to step outside of what, everyone else says is there and just see it from a different angle or whatever. Uh, and, and I, I don't know. I mean, I, get, I don't know if that's what it, like drew me to being creative or if that's just like an innate attribute of people who are creative or, yeah. um, or, or whatever, but there's definitely a distinction of like, you just absorb and respond or you are aware and redirect or like come back with with your own thing just you know thinking thinking of the the fundamental nature of exchange like uh yeah. you know exchange of energy either someone puts something towards you and you know it runs through a filter and you say yep checks out and then you accept that or you hear what a variety of people say you say "Mm, that's interesting and then you go and draw a picture you know from a different angle and then maybe you you know you take those other can those other perspectives into consideration um it's like i don't know if you're into old kurosawa films or like rashomon is a a classic uh, so he's what I don't know what you just said. Uh, Kurosawa is. <laughs> I, like I think a, I just answered your. He's, he's an old classic, like movie, uh, Japanese movie director, like in na- nineteen forties uh, or like. Why are you watching Japanese forties Japanese movies? Oh, I used to do that shit all the time. Why? Yeah. How, well, how how did you? Oh, stu- the, how do you stumble upon that? In uh, what year? What year? I so mean, like, well, how, uh, so Kurosawa is like. Like in in the realm of filmmaking, it's like the classic. No, I mean, how did you, you know, f- like? When when uh, at what year did you find about this dude? So here's the thing: like Denver's a, it's not like like where I grew up cultured. in the suburb. Go ahead and say yes, it. Yes, yes and no. Well, 
um, like there weren't a lot of uh, black people at my school, but there were a lot of Asian people at my school. Okay, so well, that's the I culture. Was, it's a yeah, different so, culture you don't run into very often. Yeah, so, I mean, my high school experience was like anime. Um, I got com- into a little food bit movies, of yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, when I was, like when I first found Wu-Tang, Oh, that's my jam right there. I, I was already into kung fu movies, so it was oh, just so like, you were loving life. Yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I, I was already, I'd already watched the John Woo films when, um, you know, Raekwon's Only Built for Cuban Links came out, and they like sampled the killer like you got all the way through that, and it, it just like gave me the the biggest like mental heart on it. Like, oh my god, this is like my favorite, you know, subculture, uh, <laughs> Japanese or or Chinese uh, action movies and. Um, an anime. Who's and your favorite killer B? Uh, man, probably. If you meth. have one, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, e- everybody like loves meth, man. I, and I, here's the thing, like that voice. Uh, you know, <laughs> this conversations come up a few times. Um, so like, like lyrically, you know, Jizza is like hard to hard to fuck with, flow wise and consistency. Ghostface, GFK, baby, God. Yeah, <laughs> what I do you think it, oh my God, I was listening I, I to Iron to Man today, and it's just like you go back to Iron Man or Supreme Clientele or like any of that stuff. I like, just, I really like uh, Method Man to Cal 2000. It was great. I like that yeah. album. That's a great album. It really it was is. really, really dark. Uh huh. Yeah, he had left eye on, on that one uh-huh. track. Um, and and they killed it. Yeah, I mean, to Cal is, I mean, to me. No one's ever going to make albums like that because they're so dirty and so raw. And the levels are, yeah. are like pretty jacked. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, and, but, man, you listen to them, and that's <clears throat> that's what's still so raw and gritty is. Um, it's real like hip-hop, that. man. I mean, that's yeah. real, I mean, that's real yeah. old school, straight up, punch you in the mouth. This is hip-hop. Get ready for it. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah. I I, can't, I remember the first time I got into Wu Tang, man. I was way too young to be getting into that shit. <laughs> right, <laughs> and they, they they broke genre. You know, like they they became a favorite of college campuses and stuff because, um, you know they were they were gangster, but they were creative, and their whole world, their man. whole like how they how they did it was very inspirational to me. Yeah. Um, and definitely I was like, yeah, I want to be able to do that. And then, you know, write some rhymes that are like, you're trying to write Wu Tang raps and you're like, dude, I'm playing myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this well, this yeah. isn't me. So then how do, how do I find my thing, which is like my perspective and then try and make that authentic or gritty or whatever. Right. Uh, and I, that's, that's tricky, man. You know, as as an artist, and I think that's a big part of where I'm at right now is how do you, how do you take like, does it have to be gritty? No, 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 no. It it doesn't have to. Auth- does it does authenticity is the that's yep. paramount, right? Someone um, just mentioned that the other. Yeah, yeah uh, authenticity is is paramount. Yeah. Just just making sure that you're not saying or pretending to be anyone. Yeah, that you're yeah. Not. So so for me personally, with with raps, I get it, like pretty creative. Uh, with them, you know, like if I'm if I want to pretend for the rap that I'm like a gunslinger and I just use like all the vernacular that would have been used, uh, you know, back when you could have been a gunslinger. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, like eighteen you know, then, eighties or sixties or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. Then, then that then that's a track, you know, um, you know, using words like up in the boot yard, you know, um, and huh. or, or like a, a song about you know sort of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, like doing stories and, yeah. and that that kind of thing, but then also, um, you know, digging deep into yourself. So I've always been <laughs> like people find out I rap and they're like, oh, you do that, too, because I know that you paint and, and people find out that I paint and and they know they already know that I rap and they're like, oh, you do that, too. Yeah. Uh, and that's <laughs> sort of uh, just been. You know, my my life for so many years is almost having different pockets or groups of people that know me as one. Kind of like we were another. talking earlier, how you're, we're different people. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm super compartmentalizing in my yeah. head. Yeah, super compartmentalizing. Oh, yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, find find a uh, find yeah. different different 
<laughs> crevices or places in myself to to fit something or to, yeah 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 I'm uh, the same way to, to stow yeah. away. I think dudes dudes are a lot of dudes are like that I feel just kind of compartmentalized shit like just Pro- I, probably maybe I, maybe I was just projecting that because that's how I am too I've got in my brain yeah. there's like uh, just these boxes I just put like like a pill box yeah Monday is this Tuesday is this Wednesday are these pills you know what I mean it's like this is daddy. This is I'm daddy mode for these few days where I'm daddy. Dude, I got, I, you know what I mean? It's here's like, the thing. I, I keep copious to-do lists. So many to-do lists. And they, they're all kind of like I tiered tiered from like the what I need to do today, what I need to do tomorrow to-do list to what I need to do on this particular project to, um, you know, these things that I'm, I need to do around the house to um, – like just branches so far around my house. I have old to-do list that you just, you know, you pick up and be like, damn, I still haven't done that. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, and I, I have to, because I want, when I'm engaged in any task, um, I, I just want to be fully focused on that. Yeah. And so that itch in my brain of man, did I forget anything? I just, like I've been on a mission to just omit that itch um, and just make sure that I'm on top of my duties well enough to know that I can, you know, cut out for an evening, come hang out with you. Right. You know, chop it up, drink some beer, whatever. And uh, I'm still going to go home, you know, tuck my girls in, do my chores and <laughs> right. be up for work tomorrow. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. uh but here's the thing, like I I don't do a lot of superfluous hanging out. Um I have a whole network of friends like my yeah, a whole network of friends that it's just like when we get up, it's creative brainstorming, you know, we oh, collaborate cool. on stuff. Oh cool. Um how fun is that? Know, Man. That I mean, for me, that's like music. So I'd love to create a group like that. If there's any fellow podcasters in the Kansas <laughs> City area, let's collab. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, but but then, uh, you know, there you're like, uh, you can't have the other podcasters too close. You couldn't. I guess I li- I, was, I listen to the Stuff You Should Know podcast, and that's Josh and Chuck, and they uh, they work really well together. But that you know, if you had, if you like met someone that, wow, yeah, we're we have great chemistry on the air. Oh, I don't mean people, as a bringing as a, a partner, but just to collaborate oh, and yeah. bounce ideas off yeah, each you, other. You and get up, have a beer, talk about what each person's yeah. doing. One person's like, hey, man, yeah. check hey, out. Come on my podcast. Yeah. Like, I'll have any Kansas City. And, you know, uh, there's this, there was this, uh, this, it was called the Kansas City Podcast. It okay. Was, I think it was fairly popular in the Kansas City area. And uh, a, a month or so ago, I sent him a, you know, I, I slid on in them DMs, baby. I slid in the DMs of his. And I said, hey, man, I got a podcast. I'm in Liberty. Mm-hmm. Would you like to come up? Here's I, was, I sent him an invite and sent a whole list. Didn't hear anything from him. That yeah. was a month and a half, two months ago. And then, but whatever, just no big deal. I don't take it personal. And then he just posted a thing yesterday that said, uh, this is the last episode of the Kansas City podcast. He did like a and half an hour long video or or podcast of he's quitting the podcast and Uh he's thankful and blah, blah, blah. And he did that on Instagram. Yeah. Sent a big post. And I said, Hey man, on on the comments, I saw he was replying to people on the comments. And so I said, Hey man, would you like to do my podcast? I'd like to talk about, he, he he had a fairly big podcast in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to pick his brain. I think maybe he'd like to help out a fellow podcaster in Kansas City. I thought it'd be cool. Yeah. And I posted on his Instagram thing, and I didn't hear it. I was like, hey, man, would you like to do my podcast? I didn't hear anything. Yeah. And I waited for another day or two or three, and then I said, I guess that's a no, huh? <laughs> like, and he did, I was like, at least say no. Like, don't totally ignore me. Yeah. yeah. I, I try and err on the side of over-communication, mm-hmm. and um, I think that's also something that I, I can do as not a super popular talent. And uh, there, you know, a lot of what I'm doing is to try and get myself to a point where I have a broader audience base. And a part of me has always been reluctant to 
be convinced that that's what I actually want because I feel like a, a lot of what I'm able to do, like I have, um, I have some, some friends who like have sort of blown up, you know, oh, doing, cool. doing music and stuff. And, cool. you know, I think from their perspective, um, opening for bigger acts and stuff, they'd say, no, we haven't blown up yet. But from my vantage point, you know, once you're doing national tours and you have like a label backing or something, right? That's pretty you know, big. You're working with, you know, video crews and and well, you're everything's just like, baby steps. You can't be you can't be Drake. Yeah, yeah. Overnight. Yeah. Here's the, here's you know, the thing. He man. had Degrassi. I, you know, he was growing up in that. You can't be top of the game. You got to take those steps, and then, and then you appreciate it more when you take them steps and get there. Yeah. And when I was in my twenties, I think that I might have really relished uh, in that that lifestyle oh. or like what I'm what I'm getting getting back the stories and everything that I that I hear but uh, like these days I mean even if I didn't have kids um, then I just don't know I don't know I don't know that that's what I want to be doing it's like like touring you know what I mean yeah I, it depends. I think, yeah, it depends I, think I do want to at the time that it's it good makes money. that's how you make the money right yeah, yeah. So my fortunate thing is that I make good money doing visual arts. Okay. But, uh, so here, I would say I'm arguably a lot better at visual arts than I am at, at rapping. But um, when you make money doing something yeah. and you're doing it 40, potentially like 40 plus hours a yeah, week, all right. uh, exercising your, your visual art, creative, yeah. conceptual brain. Uh, then you don't really want to go home and work on paintings, you know, uh, or, yeah, yeah. I uh, or understand if, that or if for you sure. Do you'd like to, uh, like there was a month last year that I just like, I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go down to, I work in the river market. I'm going to go over to the market and just sit and draw for like 30 I minutes draw. every day or whatever, you know? And then uh, like, if you go through the Instagram page, you can scroll back and you'll find those, you know, yeah. the, those uh, drawings that I was just doing every day. And, um, so I try and find opportunities to break myself out of like what I, what I typically do right now in the day to day and still uh, get myself that opportunity to, to, to draw paint, uh, whatever. Um, and, and I'm still trying to develop that sort of stuff for my music. But when I drive to and from my job, I can play beats and I can come up with rhymes. Yeah. Do you and, rap on your I way can, to work to and from that's, work? That's when I have to write my stuff because <laughs> I, you know, I, I get up, um, my, my wife gets the girls like prepped to a point and then I feed them breakfast, um, out the door, uh, hopefully on time um, <laughs> right. to drop the older one off at elementary school, the younger one off at preschool, get to work, start work, do yoga on lunch. Then oh, after work, it's head home and then <laughs> daddy mode. You know what I mean? Yeah, I daddy, do, yeah. daddy mode and chores until like 10 30, 11 <laughs> o'clock at night. Oh, wow. Something, something like that. Right. And uh, then, <laughs> you know, compromise sleep and and uh, work on some stuff or um, relax, you know, relax your brain from being all creative and focused and, oh, and that yeah. sort of stuff. Right. So you shut kinda, your brain down a little bit. Yeah. You, you got to do that. How but, do you do that? Uh, You know, I, I guess various ways. I don't sure. Lie. It used to be once upon a time it was video games. There you go. Was, Hell was, yeah. I uh, mean, I just How long is, has it been since you've gotten into some video games? You check that new Fortnite out? Dude, I'm so out of the game. I'm so out of the game. I, I have an Xbox One. I do too. Yeah. Wait, I can get you I on mean, Fortnite. I can get you addicted. Why don't you uh, <laughs> roll your sleeve up? We're going to tie a little rubber band. We're going to hit that vein, baby. That Fortnite's going to get you hooked. Dude. Stay away. I'm telling you, stay away. You know, <laughs> now part... Yeah, part of me misses it. I you know. know. I, I, mean, I know. I was like a FF7, like, r role Oh, hell yeah. Addict. Hell I, yeah. Dude, I think I almost flunked out. PS1? Of fresh, yeah. Cloud? Sephiroth? Was it was it PS1 or PS2? I don't remember. I'm thinking just, like, graphic-wise. I think it was it? PS1. I think it was PS1, dude. It might have it been. Cause no, it was PS1. Up th those it was ninety seven rudimentary polygons, but ninety seven, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety seven. It was ninety seven. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's PS1. Yeah, dude. Uh, FS7, Final Fantasy 7 for all almost. you uh, idiots out there. You idiots. <laughs> if you don't know what FF7 dude, is, I, I lose my number. Over 150 hours into that game. Just like... Manga. Where? Manga. That was so much fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can um, customize your names on all the characters. Mine, I named mine after my family. Yep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was in high school. Then. Final Fantasy 7. Dude, I never thought this podcast would go to Final Fantasy 7. Well, we've gone so many different places. <laughs> it's yeah. unbelievable, man. I, 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 I said a few. I can't. Yeah. Thank you for being here, man. This is this is a dope. Uh, I yeah, you're, I'm glad you came. Yeah, man. thanks, dude. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's fun to just I keep derailing, come, come and yeah. rap. Um, yeah, but that's that's what's fun. Like, right? You know, if people actually knew who I was, and they'd be like, "Oh, this is a really, really compelling glimpse inside of this guy's brain." You know what I mean? And I mean, hopefully, they're still not like bored. But if they are, I guess they are. Nobody's so bored listening to this. No. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah, man. So, uh, I I guess my point to dial it back a f- right like yeah pre- sorry FF like i said i derailed no, I, I, I went to ff7 <laughs> um, <laughs> talking about like unwinding or whatever, yeah right? right um but man, music is a big one for me um if yeah. i'm working or if i'm doing dishes or or doing anything like uh, like i was writing rhymes on the car on the way here and um, you know, it's like anything, if you, you get a little bit of a breakthrough and you're like, oh, here's some new bars and these fit together and, and you just, it juices you up and, and, uh, you know, I've kind of allocated a lot of the parts of myself that are relating to my life experience to rhyming, like almost definitely predominantly, if not, um, almost exclusively. I would hope so. I would hope most rappers would do that. I mean, what else <laughs> are you going to rap about? You, you got to rap about your life and what's real to you. Whether it's folding clothes, there's yeah. a. Oh, I wish I remember years ago. What is that rapper's name? I won't think of it right now, but there's a rapper that rhymes about everyday shit about being married and having kids and folding laundry, and yeah. he's legit. He's legit. Yeah, yeah that, there are there are rappers that do that. And, yeah, and I, I think that they're probably killing it. Um, it's not. I've done those songs. I like my raps to be. A departure. I like it to be like a, a, a comic book or like a fun deviation. Um, whether it's playing with uh, different rhythms or different rhyme schemes or whatever, um, like some examples or whatever. Um, like I got rhymes for days. All I need to be breaking the motherfucking mic to blaze to set it on fire like metal in a microwave and ignite the stage. I'm gonna light it up so alert town to get the fire trucks before I burn it down. About starting Austin on your harm and caught it. But also shopping I'm a target marksman. Fuck with me about a spa spotting in the box down deep in the dark with shock swim chum. Come and get some and spit from the hot pay dues and in some. This is a simp dumb of a sick tom. My rhyme recitals ill. Loose flows the purple cyanide pilch a bite of my skill. My rhymes and my kill. You know, so like that, Yeah. That's, is that something you've been working on? for a while and it just you just know it uh, dude that's one of okay so since i write the rhymes in my car i haven't memorized by the i time. was just gonna ask you about that so uh, you're doing it with no music on it's just no no, no the beat the beats are on okay and I where are you getting the beat from is it one you already have uh man or going, is it going back to that like social network of artists i have friends that are just fucking amazing producers cannot oh sweet applaud these guys enough it, it's a whole scene of really uh really talented producers mythic who you yeah met, uh, i was dude with, with you that we were painting so we, we yeah met, he's he from colorado never worked together but yeah. um i would have asked him to, to be on as well but he lives in a different state yeah, yeah i mean you, you still could right does he have google hangouts i don't know he can get it for free and download it mythic shout out to you brother if you want to be on the <laughs> podcast this is an open invitation say yes say no whatever you want yeah, so I'll let your boy. Uh, so, like my homie, uh, my new project, my homie Matt Peters, um, he didn't produce all the tracks on it, but he engineered the entire thing, produced a lot of the tracks, sang on a lot of the tracks, and um, dude, I can't wait he, to hear your shit. He's just like uh, better be good, natural musician. <laughs> <laughs> right, like I'm, I'm, I'm hyping it up, just talking about it. your shit. Yeah, better dude. be good, bro. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> <I'm just fucking laughs> but I can't wait to check it out, it, man. This is so tight, dog. 
Um, yeah, I can't wait to check it out. Damn, I wish I would have checked it out already. I feel like an asshole, but well, now I'm super excited that I haven't the checked thing, it out. Uh, yeah. You know, to, to go back early in the podcast, like, I, I had my first daughter. So I put out an album right before my first daughter was born. And, uh, and then... Like five I, and a half, six years ago, something like that. Yeah, it was... She's going to be six in December. Or two, yeah. um, so it's it's almost six years because I put it out in yeah. the October before, right? Nice. And so I rushed the album out. And it, it's cool. It's it's uh, diverse. It's got some really awesome music. The album's in it. out there. We can go get it. Well, it was out there. I had it on Spotify and Amazon and all that sort of stuff. And then about a year into having kids, and I just had no brain energy to allocate to, uh, to music or monitoring music. Um, I was like, dude, I'm just going to, I'm working on all this new stuff and I'm just going to let this expire. You okay. Know? Um, so I do have stuff out there on, on Bandcamp and SoundCloud. Um, I'm lucid flows on SoundCloud. I'm pretty sure you can, you can find some of my stuff or, um, you know, I can give you the links to, to post. Yeah. I'll post whatever. all kinds of stuff. Man. I want people yeah. to check this stuff out. Yeah. But all that I have out is, is old stuff. I've been stockpiling stuff. So I have, um, like I mentioned, music videos. So one yeah, of my, one of my passions. I'm, I've been trying to learn animation and stuff, and so oh, cool. that, was, that was part of. Um, oh, I want to do that when you know I decided to take a step back, uh, and and focus on parenting. It was like, dude, how when I come back, I want to be like levels up from when I left. I want to learn animation. I want to learn video editing, and and um, so I've just over the last six years when I get the time. You know, I work on that, but I've still been doing like uh, murals and other people's album covers or, um, yeah, y- you know, uh, art artwork here and there and and being busy. But um, it's it's culminating and also working in marketing is a great place to get to know uh, incredibly talented. Uh, oh, that like makes sense. Cameraman, producers, directors, yeah, just, just people um, who are <coughs> kind of down to, you know, down to m- work on something if it has a vision, and I'm. Um, the kind of person who has long been like fostering vision, but has always just wanted to meet the people to collaborate with, to, yeah. you know, bring visions to life. And so, you know, God, God willing some months out, I'm ready to start putting, putting stuff out. But, um, you know, I want to, I want to do it right. And it's like, you know, I finished the album, it's mastered. And then oh, cool. still need to make album cover, um, have like a single that, is recorded and done. It's going to come out before that, and I have a video for it, and I have a design that's going to be like a T-shirt, and there's there's that, and then I have videos for the album and videos that we're still conceptualizing for the album, and then you know it's like, what do you want to have like for those? And then I have a project already uh, like architecturally built, probably seventy percent of the way for like following the album. So right. I'm trying to I'm trying to like give myself a runway where, um, I you know I don't have to be in a reactive state of Oh yeah, State it's never like good, releasing, right? Like yeah. you know, have proactive, not reactive. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, be be able to control when, like, their a release schedule and do, right. do that kind of stuff. The stuff that I've never done. I'm I'm a horrible self marketer. Absolutely Me too. awful. Oh, I think I could get this podcast a little bit. It's been growing, but yeah, but if I was a, I, if I knew what I was doing, I could yeah promote self promoting so hard, dude. It it is tough, and y- because you. That's why you're supposed to collaborate. Like, if you're a creative right. mind and you're just like, you're creating stuff all the time. When, when are you gonna really have the opportunity to step outside of that role and say, like, view it externally, right? Objectify it, package it, and then put it out. And and I'm trying to force myself to to do that, but giving myself the the right tools that. Um, it's a skill. That promotion type thing is a skill. Yeah. And especially when you have a full time job, you got kids, and then you're working on this. Yeah. Like you're putting all this so much energy into the creative side, and then all of a sudden you have to promote it too. It's like, I, I, I'm I'm pulling so many different directions that I'm good at, but this part, yeah, I don't know how to self promote. I no, wish I, I wish I knew what I was doing I, too, I man. I need those people in my life, and I right. a lot of my, um, you know, a lot of my relationships have just like. <clears throat> collaborative or or trade kind of natures to them right um you know where like sometimes i pay friends for helping me out with stuff but typically it's an incredibly reduced rate right yeah absolutely and uh and a lot of the time it's just like if they need something i you know i jump to it and try and get them the best 
thing that I can give them that they need. Yeah. If, you know, if it's a logo or album cover or something, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's a producer, then um, like a lot of the beats on my project, I traded album covers for. I oh, traded nice, whatever yeah. for. And I also, though, uh, you know, that's how you get better quality stuff because it is tough yeah. initially as an MC uh, trying to get good beats is so difficult. If you don't know how to create them yourself. If, yeah, if you, I mean, because that's that, a technical that's thing to own, do. That's yeah, own that's journey. a whole nother. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. do you create? You don't create your own stuff. Uh, not my own beats. Like I, that's I, what I mean, beats. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's got to be pretty hard. But then huh. I can just be the the MC, yeah, right? And, and then when I get a beat, um, like to me, it's just it's got to be a beat that has a particular vibe to it that calls to a part of me. Oh, that's right? awesome. Well, you're a true artist. Yeah. Well, also like, otherwise you're kind of forcing it. Yeah. You know? Right. Like you have to at least be able to know what the vibe, what like your rhythm, freedom, right? You just want delivery, the freedom, your, your pace, your pace of delivery. Like okay. All, all those kind of things. Um, yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have that. Um, I got a jet. Yeah, so let's get you out of here. I've yeah, taken a ton of your time. You wanted to be no, here no, no, it, it's, it's for an good, hour, man. I said, it, and it's been like an hour and a half or so, or longer. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to text my wife and tell her that I'm about to leave. And, uh, yeah, I feel like... Hopefully I'm not too late to help get the girls together. Yeah, I feel like we just it's just the tip of the iceberg, man. I would absolutely love to have you on whenever you want, man. Open invitation as often as you want, man. I think we could keep going deep. Like, I enjoyed this. Yeah, do your little texting. I'm yeah. gonna drink my beer. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm, I'm. Oprah Winfrey the, says, uh, multitasking doesn't really work, or something. Eh. I I don't think you can. You can't do it you all. You can't be your full self. No. 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 Man, no. I gotta say, this has just been. I never have I'm always surprised with my podcast when I just get these people on and I and I th- I have a direction in my head where mm-hmm. I think it's going to go yeah. and then next thing you know we're talking about Final Fantasy 7. Yeah, well you have to go there. Yeah. Right? Like, it was so awesome cuz you know I ideally at whatever point someone I don't have yeah. You know, <clears throat> maybe even if it's a little bit down the road and they come back and listen to it then Oh, um, they, that it, happens it, a lot. Yeah, yeah, like this I'm sure someone in the 2020s or something will, you know, be listening to Oh, I didn't even think about that. Right? Yeah, Yeah. probably. Eh, Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? You know, I was just thinking about this uh, as a parent, and then I'll let you get out of here. No, you're good. Um, You know, five-year-old and a two-year-old. I was thinking they probably listen. They could potentially listen to this. If they found out that I had it, Dude, they I, don't know any. They don't know what a podcast. I is. think about that all the time. But like in like with, twelve, thirteen my, years. Yeah, but with my music and stuff, I think about that. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. But so I also, uh, you know, I would say an endorsement for for my music is I don't. I'm not really into like crass uh, shit. I don't really rap about. Uh, you know, I don't use uh, derogatory language or whatever. Like I. To me, it's it's like mindful, uh, re- respectful, but maybe grimy, gritty. Um. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I think it'll be good once someone can actually hear the music and and get like a context for uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm. I can't wait to spout, check it out. Spouting out about. Um. So just, I'm I'm trying to think of something good to leave it on and uh I'll, I'll probably let it be a verse um because like i said they're very much about about myself um Again, uh, let me get one too yeah there we go sorry just doing a little no you're good pictures on uh while we're doing this live <laughs> yeah yeah so so let me let me leave it on something like this um 
I came to give dope a new name. Spit butane when spark a spew flame. Doom train turbine at a trap. My crew came through busting like Russian troops in Ukraine. Gun it, nothing. You could do ain't a Luke Cage coming to Bruce Wayne to summon. Go on, keep running. Just remember the duck has no trump as a button and everyone's fucked. Everyone's fucked when not everyone's fucked. That rich old white dude, games on lock. They know that it takes non stop. Every day on the slots to stay on top. Hence the race war that they wage on Fox and train the thought they got Trayvon shot. But what's a hmm. crayon box without you? Surely every color has value. Altruism seems key to me. If ever more evolves a species be all people free live peacefully is what i dream to see kcmc my prime directive kindred collective minds connected hope my rhymes effective to provide a message because i got something to say so much to show when i bust the flow my frontal lobe conducts a glow time to let the motherfuckers know that i'm from the moment gonna touch the globe for the local scene that oversees for the moment that i broke and free they're gonna see that dope mc that grown to be you know my steez damn man you said some shit you didn't say words you said shit yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're spitting real stuff. That's not just words that rhyme. No, That's like no. real, like from. Yeah, yeah. baby. Uh, like a really, dude. A really old one. Uh, check this one out. Damn, uh, that's a really good. old one. Damn, uh, I want that. Damn, why can't I be a rapper? I can I? T- <laughs> Speaking of rapping, I just posted this on Twitter before we started. Uh-huh. I was uh, doing some stuff, doing some listening to some rap. Mac, the Mac Miller death really hurt me. I don't know why. I was putting some YouTube with some Mac Miller stuff. a lot of people. Yeah. I can't finish a video. I get super emotional, and I have to turn it off right now. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, it touched it's a lot weird, of people. It's weird, man. I don't know what it is, but it's weird. That touched me, man. I, I think he he had a, a generosity or, like, a genuine aspect of it. Yeah, that, that authenticity that we were really, talking about, really you know? really connected to, and, yeah. and it uh, hits home even that much more. Uh, you know, if, if you find out that an artist that, you know, like, like Michael Jackson has such a social veneer around himself that to find out that he he OD'd like it's it's tragic and it touches on a on a different level right um but then someone he was also who older you, you feel like you knew this person through their music like y- you didn't really know MJ through his music it was something he did um someone like Mac Miller I feel like you kind of know them not only that but uh, why also hit me I found out about him when he was before a whole lot of people did. When his mm-hmm. YouTube, when he was on YouTube with like a hundred thousand hits, like oh, I, I've been following yeah. him when he was super, like he was he so was you, still in high school. You saw like the whole evolution. Yeah, and he's it just young. yeah, and he's and he yeah. just had a, a recent song where he didn't want to join the. He he said like like to all my drug dealers out there, don't put that funny shit in there. I don't want to join the club twenty seven. He died at twenty six. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, dude, that shit sucks, bro. But uh, yeah. How, I don't want to end the podcast on that, but we kind of are. Yeah, how, how Whatever, about, I got to get you out of here. You got, uh, you how, got. How about, how about this? Yeah, Just, end it on this, and I'm gonna hit end as soon as you're done with this. Thank you guys, Lucid Flows. Yeah. On SoundCloud. Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. Neanderthal Pod on Instagram. Guys, subscribe, rate, review, all that good shit. We're gonna end as soon as he ends with his dope ass rope. Holla at your boy. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't fuck this up now. You won't. No, thanks for having me, dude. Uh, yeah, this is it's an old one. Uh, it's like just think constructing your thoughts a world different from the one that you got a place where injustice is fought where when traveling more ground a higher summit is sought imagine that perfect world tell me what is it not a place to attain a virtue where corruption is taught to kids to learn to grow up selling drugs on the block or become corporate CEOs stealing funds for the stocks drawing the greed like fish debate from allure pursuing paper no we can't escape the allure it's human nature you see there's no obtaining a cure we're doomed to failure disease upon a planet inhabited long since adam and eve we as the species have been known to cause collapse of debris across whatever land we walk we chop the axes and trees the only ally against the toxic gas we breathe gotta start planting some seeds more than a glance to perceive a better plan to proceed all the advancements achieved the better hand up our sleeve and a greater famine to feed call it the land of the free where nothing is and just to live can cost as much as your soul for sustenance and just think